In our society, we call this Frank Show Entertainment News. Woo! Okay. All right. Uh, 628. All right. So we're going to lead off headlines with a PETA story. A PETA and the Tonight Show story. Oh. And what? and I'm going to, uh, before we get into the story, I'm going to tell you I'm 100% on the side of PETA. Uh, because they're going after the Jimmy Fallon hosted Tonight Show. <laughs> now, if this were David Letterman that PETA was going after, I'd 100% be on the side of David Letterman. Uh-huh. Or Colbert. Or Colbert. But I'm not a fan of Fallon, so I'm on the side of PETA with like, this. Woo-hoo. PETA has asked cities, uh, the city, I guess the L.A. city. No, New York. Oh, Los Angeles. Oh, th- I thought Fallon was in. No, he's in New York. It's Kimmel that's in Los Angeles. Yeah. Oh, there's so many. He moved of them the anymore. show from L.A. Oh, that's to right. New York. Pete has asked the city to investigate the Tonight Show Tuesday for improperly allowing celebrities such as Kate Beckinsale and Jacob Anderson to play with animals on the broadcast. What? <laughs> They're just touching them. Those animals are used to being handled. I don't know. The animal rights organization is up in arms after NBC hired Grant Kimmerer of Wild World of Animals for various segments that involve celebrities touching animals, including having the widow actress poke an African bullfrog. Who's the widow actress? Is that Kate Beckinsale? No, it's. Uh, I think it's a... Uh, Jacob Anderson? Actually, I, I've never seen Widow. You have no idea? I, I no. don't even okay. know. I have no idea. If you don't know, that's fine. Yeah. On another episode, Anderson, who played Grey Worm on Game of Thrones, was stuffed into a phone booth with Kimmerer, Jimmy Fallon, and a python snake. Oh, ho, 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 the <laughs> hilarity. Oh, Fallon always comes up. He's an idea factory. Yeah, are they high in that writer's room? Like, mm. okay, so let's just have a snake on. Uh, I know. This will be great. Right. Instead of flying cash, it'll be a python. Man. <laughs> uh, the letter also cites a segment in which Robert Irwin, the son of the late Steve Irwin, handles an alligator, a millipede, a miniature horse, and a mandrel on separate occasions. Oh, no. Yeah, so... Peter's letter to the New York City Health Department claims Kimmerer didn't have permission to let anyone other than himself and his employees touch the wildlife. Well, it's like when the Sonoran Desert Museum comes in with a hoot owl. Yeah. I'm not allowed to touch. Well, no. He might get bit. Right. They know how to handle it. That's right. Yeah. So this is uh, Jimmy Fallon needs to serve at least two years in prison. (laughs) No. Huh? No. No, no, no. Who are you to judge? Come on. No. Uh, FX is uh, uh, FX, the TV network. Uh, They've unveiled today that its third season of the award-winning limited series franchise, American Crime Story. Oh yeah, is going to center on the sex scandal that rocked the presidency of Bill Clinton. Oh my God, Sarah Uh, Paulson, after winning a Best Actress limited primetime Emmy for her turn as Marsha Clark in American Crime Story: The People versus O.J. Simpson, Mm -hmm. is going to return as Linda Tripp. I knew it. Really? While while Beanie. Enough. Beanie yeah. Feldstein is going to play Monica Lewinsky with Annalee Ashford as Paula Jones. Lewinsky will also, uh, Lewinsky is going to be a producer on the series. Oh, good. Production begins on the Fox uh, FX production in February. Who's playing Hillary? The third Ooh. season yeah. premieres September 27th, 2020. Wow. So we got to wait a while, a little yeah. over a year to get the Bill Clinton story. Oh, my God. I'm actually excited about this. Hey, uh, I remember, man, I saw it li- live when it happened, and I remember it like it was yesterday. When he when Clinton was at the oh, yeah. podium, I know, I remember. And, and he had his fist with like his this, with his finger like with his finger curled in, yeah. saying, "I did not have sexual relations with that woman." Ugh. So then, at the time, I remember it was a conversation about well, what constitutes sexual relations? Oh, and I was sitting at home going, "You totally did." Yeah. Yes, so you did. It, when, when, when Bill Clinton says he did not have sexual relations, is he is is he speaking specifically about intercourse? Yes. Oh. And saying that. That, hey, hey, we didn't do that. Yeah. And then he ends he up... Ha- ain't che- he ain't cheating. No, that's Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I got it wrong. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> different awful guy. Yeah, different pig. Um, all right. Whatever. <laughs> I, I'm sick of it still. Like, I'm still, like, over it. I'm not. Oh, I can't get enough of it. I think it's great. I hope that they show some of the alleged things that the Clinton administration did during that time. Like, uh, here's an example. Kevin Spacey met with Bill Clinton. And Bill Clinton told Kevin Spacey, you don't know how close to accurate House of Cards really is. And in House of Cards, they kill people. It's crazy. 
Yeah, so, yeah, that's what I thought. I thought when I watch House of Cards, I thought, oh man, now I know how Washington really works. Yeah, it is probably closer to home. Yeah, Bill Clinton was uh, in a in a subway stop at 3 a.m. pushing a young lady reporter onto the tracks. I don't mean that part. I mean I the do. part That's about... the part I always think of. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like, why did he kill her? Why did he shove her? She was cute. She was my favorite reporter on the show. I loved her. She was going to rat him out. Yeah, she was. Yeah, and if Monica was the one who was going to talk, I don't think we would know who Monica Lewinsky is today. Stupid Lon- Monica and, and Linda. Linda Tripp was the, the, the I, gross one in all I this. Right. It. The only uh, reason why we know everything about this, because Linda Tripp was too big to push. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think she rode the subway myself. Yeah, yeah. she wasn't really a subway lady. Yeah. Mm. Um, dude, I love this story about Tom Brady. You what? know, well, Tom Brady is super upset that his son's not into football. Yeah. <laughs> Just Aww. wait until he's in junior high and a YouTuber, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he's upset. Tom yeah. Tom Brady surprised his son doesn't like football because he's a boy. How, how awful is that from Tom? Well, all boys are supposed to like you knocking heads. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is weird, but I mean, maybe he's learning something. You know, your kids, you, you're giving birth to people. Not well, yeah, I, exactly. Tom thinks, oh man, I'm going to have a son, and he's going to be the second greatest quarterback ever. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he'll be a, a songwriter. Maybe he'll be a, a, a canvas painter. Yeah, maybe he'll be a dancer. Yeah, I mean, maybe he'll be Billy at Elliot too. Yeah, and yeah, just as long as he's not a soccer player. That would probably uh, probably infuriate him. Uh, since Tom Brady's life has revolved around football for longer than his 20-year NFL career, he was taken aback when his middle child had no interest in the sport. Yeah. <laughs> you, I can't imagine like me talking to one of my boys and feeling indignant because they didn't want to be a small market shock jock. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you kidding me? What? You don't want to do what I do? Yeah. <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> if it's cool, Dad, I'll just get a real job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, it, if it's all the same to you. Yeah, if you don't mind. <laughs> I'd rather make some money. Yeah. Uh, Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow on how it felt to become super famous in the 90s. Back then, everybody was telling me, you're going to be something like, and I was like, I don't know, but I guess I'm on this train. Can you stop giving me Gwyneth Paltrow stories, Brad? For the love of God, I can't stand her. She just moved in with her husband, who she's been married to for a year. Oh, so, so, yeah. Weird. She goes, after a year of marriage, we finally moved in together. Right. Who cares? I, nobody. That's why I, but Brad keeps giving me goop stories. But you know what's funny <laughs> is that she's like, oh, and I was, she seemed surprised that she was famous or didn't understand it or whatever. Right. Like, no, crap. it's bull her because, she, yeah, famous. she's from Hollywood royalty. Yeah. Right. She's an idiot. Her mom is Blythe Danner. Yeah. Are you yeah. kidding yeah, me? Yeah, go F. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> your mom? Is that what you're going No, say? I almost said go F yourself, but it <laughs> seemed inappropriate. Yeah. That's a little harsh, I guess. And a little over the top. But I don't like her. I know and so, you, I know. and so she elicits those kind of emotions. I love the, uh, the ask me anything she did on Instagram. Yeah. And someone said, do you even cook? Nope, she doesn't. And how angry did she get? <laughs> she flipped out. But she's so dumb, she doesn't even realize that she's signaling to everyone that she doesn't cook. Yep. <laughs> yeah, she does. There's God no damn way. it. She wrote that many cookbooks. Idiot. She, she named her daughter Apple. I know. It's like the first fruit she ever looked at. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, so I don't know. I think Brad does this on purpose because he knows I don't like Gwyneth Paltrow and he knows I don't like Cameron Diaz. Yeah. But Cameron Diaz is working on something new, but she's keeping it a secret, Christine. <laughs> and here she says, I've given more than half of my life to the public. Oh, and thank you, Cameron. I feel like it's okay for me to take time for myself now. Really? Now yeah. that no one wants to cast you in a movie because you're cares. over 50? No, no. Nope. That, I mean, that's why. <laughs> let's be honest. Nobody cares if she wants to take time for herself. I don't know why she's. Nobody noticed like, that she stopped working by that's, choice. That's what I was telling yeah. Christina off there. Yeah. I said Cameron Diaz called up her agent and said, you know what? I'm not getting very many Google alerts about me. Right. <laughs> Does anybody want to talk to me? Somebody <laughs> needs to do a story on me. Yeah, that was uh-huh. the most surprising thing about that headline. I'm like, oh, oh, that's oh, by choice, huh? Oh, oh, I didn't know. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, there's a movie called The Hunt where elite liberals hunt and kill deplorables. It was scheduled to hit theaters next month. But given the recent mass shootings, the networks are pulling the ads for this horror flick. Ugh. It's a satirical horror flick. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know. You can't get a bunch of libtards. They don't have to touch guns. No, that's not true. <laughs> I, I see these debates on Twitter all the time. Yeah. Yeah, because the, the red pill set's like, yeah, yeah, you libtards. We got the guns. And then the libtards are like, yeah, but we got better aim. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Uh, 638. All right. There's some headlines. We'll get a break. Let me see what we got coming up next. Oh, oh we're going to talk about Disney's new streaming service, which I'm excited about. Oh, yeah. yeah. I am. I saw the announcement yesterday. came across as an alert. Disney is going to be offering up Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus for one wonderful discount rate. And Netflix's days are numbered. Do you think this is going to signal the end? I don't. I do I do not. Not the end, but it's going to be... It's going to hurt them. It's like HBO and Cinemax. Who really watches Cinemax? I don't know. My wife exactly. does. Uh. But not the fun stuff. Hey, you. Pay attention. Back to the Frank Show now on 96.1 KLPX. All right. Well, apparently we've got new listeners, Christine. Yeah. So let's make the introductions. My name's Frank Brinsley. Yes. Host of the Frank Show. Yes. Uh, here Hello. in Tucson from summer of 2000. Uh, my co-host is the lovely and talented Christine Levine. Mm-hmm. Google uh, me. Uh, stand up. Uh, uh, she's got uh, acting credits in Portlandia and, and others. Mm-hmm. And then over here, our producer, Peckerwood. It's <laughs> <laughs> that, that producer, Peckerwood. Sick burn. <laughs> <laughs> I love getting called Peckerwood before 7 a.m. in the morning. No, it's great. Uh, Brad was getting harassed. Oh Brad was getting harassed by a caller who identified himself as Jamie mm. and said he's new to the area. And would you guys please leave the politics out? Yeah. <laughs> Call effeminate Jamie. Uh, 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 Brad was calling him effeminate Jamie. So when effeminate Jamie was calling in, what was he saying, Brad? He's like, um, he's, can you guys... <laughs> Can you guys uh, leave the politics out of here? I just moved to Tucson and I uh, just started listening and I want to be entertained. <laughs> and you cannot entertain me with the politics. <laughs> oh, excuse us. Oh, Jamie. <laughs> Sir Jamie. Yeah. How uh, dare us. Okay, so um, I don't know. I, so Jamie's new, uh, Jamie's new to the area and he's new to the show. What Jamie doesn't know is that we made a conscious decision in November, December of 2017 to n- never mention certain individuals' names. Right. And so I-, I don't know what level of politics we got to in that last segment, but I can tell you, whatever it was last segment is uh, uh, pales in comparison to what it should be. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we should be seriously 24-7. Mm-hmm. Did he identify to you what it was that we were talking about that triggered him? No, Brad? I know what we talked about in the first segment. We talked about the Times Square's, uh, oh, you know. Oh, the, ba- the motorcycle backfiring and people thinking it was a mass yeah, shooting. Okay. Right, which is not political. Yeah. Both, you know, uh, all yeah. par- parties yeah. ran for their yeah, lives yeah, in that what one. Else? Uh, then we talked about Tucker Carlson uh-huh. uh, saying that white supremacy is a hoax. Oh, oh right, right, right. Okay. Last I check, he's not running for office either. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, here we are talking about it again, just rehashing it. Jamie must be pulling out his hair. Right. He's losing his mind. I said, I was like, you know what? You could write the entire show for us so we could just strictly entertain you. Ah, yeah. How did he respond? What did he do? Uh, he's like, oh, that's very clever. Uh, what's your name? And then I hung up. <laughs> what's your name? Oh. Okay, Karen. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, so, effeminate <laughs> Becky yeah. called in this morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What? Are you going to report me to my manager? So what did he uh, identify where he was from or where he came from? You know, he probably came from a bigger city, Christine, and he had his local show that he loved. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, he did not. I didn't ask him any personal questions. Though. I was not necessarily in the mood. Jamie's more than welcome to call in. Let's make friends. Yeah. What do you What do you need, Jamie? What is it that you need that we're not providing you? And when I when I hung up on him, he called back and he said, oh, "I know what your name is. It's Peckerwood." <laughs> and then he hung up on me. Sick burns. Yeah. Sick. Sick. Yeah. Oh, really gotcha. Sick. Man. Which is not the worst thing I've been called while working the show. Oh, really? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> so I do kind of appreciate do you that. do you remember the worst thing you've been called working this show brad yeah but i can't repeat it oh put it in the group chat text tell me what it is okay and it, what is this i always feel like if brad gets some guff from listeners it's my fault oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it usually is that can, that's Just normal stuff oh, like yeah. you know. it doesn't really it doesn't make sense for it to be my fault yeah 
Just uh, like the A word with oh, the oh. F word in front of it. Oh, F and A hole then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. No, well, it's not an F and A hole. Who's whoever said that the bread is themselves an F and A hole? That's, That's true. Saying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you call in and your name calling, you're just calling yourself those names, you big dummy. Uh-huh. Right. <laughs> Nobody that knows me would call me an a hole unless they've dated me. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. unless they had to get an antibiotic prescription. That's after. right. <laughs> Yeah, then I guess I'm the a-hole. Yeah. <laughs> I take full blame yeah, in that well, situation. And you should. As well, you should. Oh, man. But effeminate Jamie is uh, still trying to get used to what we're doing here. Yeah. So, uh, it'll take him a while, you know? Uh, the, I guess maybe there's some segments where he feels entertained and others where the entertainment factor is lacking a little bit. Are you know. not entertained, Jamie? <laughs> No. What can we possibly do for him? I just I mean, it, feel it, terrible. Yeah. Okay. Poor baby. Can we make an assumption uh, based on Brad's description of calling him effeminate, Jamie, that he's not heterosexual? No, I don't think you can. Oh, oh. you can't. You can't tell, but he uh, he sounds effeminate, right? Okay. All right. So. All right. Well, Jamie, uh, all of us here are allies, if that makes you feel any better. That's true. Damn yeah. right. So, parade, uh, parade every single year. Uh, pride parade. There, there are yeah. a lot of other white radio show hosts that are not allies to LBGTQ plus AAA, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, that's right. right. We there covered are. all the letters. Mm-hmm. Did I say triple A? Yeah. Yes, you did. Okay, just make sure. But that's sure. good because a lot of the community does have, uh, you know, roadside insurance. Yes, well, they and, have vehicles. And, and, and a lot of the LGBTQ people drive vehicles. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Uh, they wouldn't be able to in Saudi Arabia, would they? Uh, yeah, so stop, you know, maybe stop looking gift horses in the mouth, Jamie. <laughs> I mean, <don't> even <laughs> <laughs> Making stuff up now. I have no idea. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, all right. I'm surprised we've not heard from Jamie. I know. The only reason I did this segment is so he'd call in. Yeah, well, because he, he, the last time he called in, he's like, uh, oh, what is your name? Because I want to know who I'm calling and tormenting, who I'm, who I'm going to call and torment. <laughs> and I was like, well, keep listening, dumbass, because they say my name. Yeah, yeah. Peckerwood. Yeah, and it's beef vegan if you Google on social media. I think it's Peckerwood on Instagram and and Twitter. I believe Peckerwood is taken, unfortunately. <laughs> or I would take that as well. <laughs> I don't know that you know that. I think you're just assuming it's taken. I'm going to look up Peckerwood Instagram. I bet you 10 bucks you can get some variation. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. I'm like sure. pe- use, use, use zeros instead of O's in the wood. Yeah. yeah. Good idea. <laughs> yeah. You'll figure out a way. <laughs> right. Seven or six fifty four. Oh, I got Jamie on the phone. Oh yeah. Oh well he waited a little late to call in, didn't he? Yeah. Now we have to play our commercials and pay our bills. Uh, uh next time be hey, able- go ahead. I only I only called in so you guys could make more money. Oh, okay. Now he's not funny. No, All that's right. he wasn't no. funny the whole time. I made him funny. Right. You did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Show on 96.1 KLPX. All right. Dude. I don't know. I, I'm just curious. I see the phone has been answered over there in the studio by Brad, and then I look down. They've been chatting for an hour now. Oh, Not an hour. Okay. Non-stop. Who are you chatting with? What's going on over there? I'm oh, so curious. Chat with Groove. Oh, that what? crybaby. Why is he calling? Because <laughs> uh, he's trying to make friends again. Here's a guy that, like, absolutely did not listen to anything I said 
and and in his own head turned it around to what he wanted to hear and right. then twisted it. And yeah. now he wants to apologize? He wants to apologize. Well, he's trying to make friends again is what Brad says. Yeah, oh he's, he says he's been texting you every day, oh. but you haven't responded. <laughs> oh, I was is that like, right? Yeah, yeah, I was like, uh, yeah, I think you blocked you, dude. Yeah, I yeah. blocked him. Yeah. I'm getting no text from a low IQ piece of garbage like Groove. Go after yourself, Groove. Oh, come yeah, on. Well, you still... Why would you want to hear from someone who called you terrible names? I, like, I, I, I wouldn't. That. No. True. No. He called me an ignorant piece of ass and he called me a little faggot. Ugh. So, no. Mm-hmm. That's not happening, Groove. I will find another show to listen to. I don't know what to tell you. I don't want to have you as a listener. Mm-hmm. I don't like you. Uh, I don't want you calling into my show and I certainly don't want you trying to make amends. It's not necessary, right? I mean, why? How about them apples? Yeah. There's just some stuff that you just don't have to put up with That's right. as an adult or yeah. in any capacity. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I got a real no. simple message for Groove. GFY. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily. I think, he got, yes. I, I think he got an earful of that the other day. A bunch of GFY, didn't he? I believe he did, yes. I yeah. actually, I was right here. Yeah, Brad was right there. He saw the whole thing. I uh-huh. heard it from the other studio, from the studio yeah. over there. Well, yeah. I was telling was Groove crazy. to GFY. So loud. Everyone heard it. Good. I mean, I could hear it from here. Good. That's a soundproof room. And, but, but, but this was a guy. Okay, he got mad because I said, wow, brown people are living in fear and terror and horror. Yes. And in some small measure, I wonder if that's the kind of fear and horror that Jews lived through mm-hmm. in Germany mm-hmm. in the 40s. Right. Uh, so I was talking about the terror that people live through when they're targeted. Yeah. Then he calls in, man, you can't say that. They gas people. They use it for human experiment. Well, yeah. okay. Pro- and only pro- a couple brown people. Uh, okay, props. First, props yeah. to Groove on not being a Holocaust denier. Oh, I guess. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> That's the only way he could be a bigger uh, jerk. <laughs> you're right so you well he grew up jewish so he says he knows about the holocaust oh great we okay. all do too okay. yeah good. i know all about it we all do right yep not a holocaust what? denier check good. Yeah, good that is good okay listen all right we're moving on yeah uh i have a very exciting announcement to make the rolling stones song of the day is honky tonk women and guess what not now no. no, I'm just playing it so you know what honky tonk women sounds like. <laughs> In case you never heard it. When you hear the song of the day, be caller nine, and you'll win a pair of tickets to see the Rolling Stones August 26th at State Farm Stadium in Phoenix. I met a gin bar of Queen in Memphis. She tried to take me upstairs for a ride. I think this is the first time... Listeners have paid attention, and they're not calling in to win tickets to Rolling Stones. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> but you keep saying tickets to Rolling Stones, they're going to call in. Right there, yeah. All right, so this is the Rolling Stones song of the day, Honky Tonk Women. Again, when you hear the song of the day, not now. Caller 9 wins a pair of tickets to see the Stones, August 26th. Oh, 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 uh, State Farm <laughs> Stadium in Phoenix. All right, that's nice. That's fun. I've never seen the Stones. Christine, I'd love to see the Stones. Yeah, me too. It's a one concert. Unfortunately, mm. we only have tickets to give away. We have no comp tickets for any of uh, the staff oh, at It's a bummer. Yeah, which is a shame because you're like, oh, you guys are trying to fill up that stadium and you want us to uh, do all these extra mentions. That's cool. Can we get... No? No. Oh. Mm-hmm. oh, but Brad, it's the Rolling Stones. And you know what? Air your frustrations off air. No one listening cares. Uh, well, I know because... <laughs> It's uh, kind of entitled, but that's why I got into this business. Yes, I know. For I free got, tickets. I got into this business to be, because I thought I'd be able to talk to girls. Really? Yeah. Oh, I. You know what? I guess because my um my cousin like had a few DJ friends. Yeah. Yeah. When she was a teenager. Yeah. yeah. And they were real creepy with her. Oh. Yeah. What the DJ guys were? Yeah. Oh, that's not surprising. Yeah, because they were like in their twenties or whatever, and she was like seventeen, sixteen Wait, years but old. But hold on, is this in. your cousin that's the cheerleader at University no, of Oregon? Because no, I don't. Her, it's that's her, understandable. Her aunt, but oh, also her. hot. Oh yeah. Yeah, she was real hot. Yeah. I mean, she's still hot, but yeah. All right. Oh, listen. When I was doing a night show in Memphis mm-hmm. in the nineties, when Hootie and the Blowfish and Matchbox Twenty were a big deal, right? 
girls would call in and request hooting the Blowfish in Xbox 20 all the time. Yeah, they did. Yeah, that was my cousin. Oh, hey, what's your name? Lisa Marie. What? Really? Oh, Oh my God. Yeah. Wow. What? You want to meet? What? Really? Oh, she's all into it. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, because you're awesome for playing her that hootie. But but then she shows up to the station and she's drop dead. Yeah. On top of that, and I thought she's lying at first. She had no sense of smell. Oh, oh what? That's perfect. So we went to dinner. <laughs> yeah. We went to dinner, and I had her in my car, and I go, you know, I'm going to test this. And I let a I let a floater biscuit go. Oh. And no reaction at all. Nice. And it was bad. Did she still kiss you after that? We, uh, I don't think we ever had sex. We did a bunch of like make out tops off, but okay, we, yeah. Unfortunately, huh. never got to the. Unfortunately, your sense of sight still works. Yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> church girl who was you oh, know at the yeah. time was a little nervous about. I can't do yeah, it. I but I used to take her to uh, African American nightclubs and dance with her. Yeah, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only white guy in the whole place, and I was loving it. I just loved it. I imagine like walking into a club of black lights and you have that white lint on your shirt that sticks out and that's kind of like you on the dance floor. I don't get it. Christine, what's he talking about? It's a long way around the barn. I mean, he's talking about, um, yeah, you know, like when you go to a club and there's Uh black lights, right? Okay, yeah. You ever have the lint or dandruff show up on your shirt? (laughs) Okay. He's saying he's comparing that to you being in a black person like nightclub. Yeah, like sticking out. Everyone could see that piece of lint. On yeah. your shoulder. Oh, under a black light. I, yeah, I yeah, yeah. I get. Well, yeah, no, we would walk in and everybody would look at us. And then and then they all had the attitude, oh, my God, they're coming in here. We're going to have fun just like they are. Oh, yeah. yeah. I went to a, a black like reggae club one time and I immediately got asked to dance. Of course. I was pregnant. Oh, yeah. And I said to the guy, the, was for, one guy asked me to dance. And I said, I am like eight months pregnant. And he goes, Mom, I ain't trying to marry you. Yeah. And I was like, oh, mm. let's dance. Yeah. Right. My bad. You're right. <laughs> All right, let's dance. I loved it. It was great. I had the best time. It was so fun. Yeah. I danced yeah. all night. You're not trying Love to get it. married. You're just having fun. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. not trying to marry you. You're just going to get out on the yeah. dance floor and uh, bust a move or but two. I did. Yeah. I, I rocked my baby to sleep. <laughs> it was inside me. And I just. It would have been great it if that's. So fun. It would have been great if that story ended with your water breaking on the dance floor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and just add that part <laughs> later on. Oh God. Um, all right, we got Honky Tonk Woman Song of the Day when it's played, blah, blah, blah. Very nice. Okay. Oh, by the way, that August 26th show at State Farm Stadium in Phoenix, that's a, a real thing. That's a real make update. Uh, yeah, it's going to happen. Top 10 things we want our kids to be when they grow up, and Rich did not make the list. That means parents lied. What? Yeah. You well, they just gave up on the future of their kids. Oh. I don't believe this. Happiness gets a result. It says parents care more about their kids' happiness than their grades. Oh, uh, you know what? I believe that if they spoke to American parents. Oh, yeah. Yeah. White, Amer- because- white American parents. Sure. Yeah. Uh, my- I think everyone wants to be happy, right? No, no, everybody wants to be happy, but I think other ethnicities place more importance on education. <laughs> that might be true. <laughs> I, uh, I, I didn't. Ju- I just remember my mother, when I was growing up, would say to me, I don't care if you clean toilets for a living as long as you love the Lord. Uh, and I remember thinking as a kid going, you know what? I think I can do better than that. Yeah. yeah somehow. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I told my kids I just wanted them to be happy. And um, I think that they saw how like happy I was and taking a creative route. Right. And how miserable their dad was who has a master's degree in business. Right. And chained to a desk all day. And they just picked, they, you know, like two of them went to college. Uh, Christopher didn't. He's just a sandblaster and an artist, but they're happy. This is, uh, there was a whole thing in here. Is this it? Oh, I've, this is the same link twice. Yeah. Speaking about going to college, half of young Americans say, I don't think I need college. Yeah. And mm-hmm. uh, they're, they're probably on to something. Yeah. Um, I, I knew when I was 12, I was going to work in radio. Right. I was working in radio at 15. So by the time I graduated high school at 18, I already knew I was going to do this for a living. Mm -hmm. So when I went to college, I just goofed around. Did Uh, a little uh, underwater basket weaving and and recreational pharmacology. (laughs) All the courses you take in college. Sure. Uh, They have more options today, young people, says Dara Luber, a senior retirement manager at TD Ameritrade. More students are looking at online courses, doing uh, classes at community college, Commuting from home or going to a trade school. I got two boys. The idea of both of them going off to a four-year university and living in dorms freshman and sophomore years like used to be the 
the way things were done. Right. I don't see that happening. Mm-hmm. I just don't. You say one out of two will do it? No. Or that? No, I just see I just see maybe a couple of years of community college. and It's just. Right. I, you know how f- four years of university? They right. don't want to go into debt anymore. Who wants, to, who wants to owe 100 grand once you get a diploma? It's terrible. It's, uh, it's horrible. It follows them their whole lives. There are people now in their 70s dying with, with, with school debt. Stool de- Student loan debt, yes. yeah. Right, there's still a ton of great careers out there that you need to have a college education to get, though. So, you know, they, they're kind of screwed if they don't. This this uh, radio thing ain't one of them. No, obviously. Either. I mean, I barely got my GED. Yeah, you do have your GED? I got my GED. Good for you. Wow. I didn't know that. Oh, come on. What do you mean, come on? I tell on. everybody that oh. asks. Oh, well, I, maybe I remember <laughs> you saying that, but I forgot. It's on his Tinder profile. Uh-huh. Yeah. Has GED. Passed it the first time. Oh, yeah. you did? Didn't That's... even study. No, Bam. good for you. Yeah. Nice. I wonder if I could pass a GED test. I wonder. Well, there's probably questions, sample questions we could look right. at. 721, we'll get a break. Dumbass of the day, when we come back, cops catch a burglar, uh, police in Spain catch a guy, fridge tipping. Yeah. <laughs> Two white cops on horseback in Galveston. I feel like a lot of people have seen this photo now. Uh, and they were leading a uh, handcuffed black man using a rope. Uh, let's see. A woman taken into custody after an ambulance incident in Phoenix. Dumbass of the day next. 96.1 KLPX. More Frank on the way. Go deeper. Listen to KLPX 2. Deep cuts on your HD radio at 96.1, subchannel 2, or with the free mobile app. Or stream it online at klpx.com. Traffic from the Arizona Lotus Duncan Traffic Center. America runs on Duncan. This traffic report brought to you by Zinberger, offering $4 kids meals all summer long. Through the end of August, bring the whole family in for Zinful treats. And check out ZinbergerAZ.com. Drivers in town are going to find a slight uptick in traffic levels for this Wednesday morning commute. Starting to find some backups on Limber Lost, east and westbound Oracle to 1st Avenue. That's not a surprise as River Road, eastbound and westbound Oracle to 1st Avenue is under construction. Still going to find Roger Road closed, eastbound 1st Avenue to Campbell as road work does continue. Starting to find some slowdown south side of town. Our west side of town, actually. Aho. Seven thirty-one. It's the Frank Show. I've got a slew of dumbass stories ready to go. So here we let's do it. Let's just... yeah. I think you're stupid. Real stupid. Who suffered brain damage? Brain, brain, brain damage. Dumbass of the day. All right, Christine, I've got a treat. This is an audio dumbass of the day. Ooh, I love yeah. these. Reciclando. Vamos a reciclarla. Haciendo <laughs> rally, <laughs> Okay, those guys are saying in Espanol, recycling, it's time to recycle. The man thought he could get rid of a fridge by throwing it off a cliff in Almeria, Spain. I actually saw this, uh, I think, like a couple days ago. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but the guy was found by Spanish police who then ordered him to drag it up the cliff by hand. Ah! Oh. <laughs> and there's the video of him climbing up the cliff by hand. The police then posted the footage of the cleanup on their social media, which I think is great. <laughs> Good choice of bed music for them. He was fined 41,000 euros by Spanish authorities in order to collect the fridge and dispose of it properly. Good. And then they shamed him on social media. Yeah, I also read that there might be a chance that he's even thrown way more down there. Um, I bet you it's not the first time he's tossed something over the edge. Well, because he works for like a recycling company. Well, there you go. And they have no record Listen, of anything ever being recycled. I told this to my wife. I, I, don't, I don't know this to be certain. But I feel like recycling service has gone from once a week to twice a month at my house. That's mine too, yeah. Okay, I don't know that. I got to confirm that. But I think that's what's going on. Yep. And I told my wife, once our recycling's full, the recyclables are then going to go into the normal trash. Right. And my wife goes, no, no, it's not. Why not? Where else is it going to go? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, what are you going to do? I'm just going to hoard it? I don't know. We'll figure it out, I guess. <laughs> Two Topekans. You know what that means? That means two human beings from Topeka, Kansas. Ah, yeah. Two Topekans walk into a bar. Mm -hmm. Uh, Were arrested Saturday in connection to a burglary that occurred south of Mayetta. 30-year-old Eric Fernandez and 25-year-old Chelsea Ray 
are both being held at the Jackson County Jail in connection with burglary, trespassing, and felony obstruction. Fernandez additionally arrested in connection with theft on Friday evening. Jackson County Sheriff's Office got a report of a burglary, uh, which is located between Mayetta and Hoyt. Where is this? Am I? Where am I again? Topeka. Uh, Kansas, that's Kansas. right. Yeah, yeah. We're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> no, wait, we are. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, Sheriff Tim Morse uh, uh, let a news release out about this arrest. He said the suspects fled the scene in a silver SUV as neighbors approached them. Law enforcement began searching for the two suspects through Friday night. On Saturday, a, a citizen reported seeing the suspects, and deputies were able to find Ray on the side of the road and arrested her. Fernandez was later arrested not far from where the woman was apprehended. All right, that's great. Uh, oh, I got a better story. This one's better. Well, the funny part is that he covered himself in mud. No. Wait, did I miss that part? Yeah. Or is that a different story? No. Oh, why doesn't it say that in the story? I'm I, looking at the photos of him right I, now. I don't know, but he is covered yeah. head to toe yeah, 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 yeah. in mud. So the guy tried to hide in the mud. Why, that that yeah. should be included in the story. I'm looking at the photos of him right now. His, he, he doesn't look like a white guy anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I think he was trying to cover up his smell or something. Was he like, for was he like you know, one time uh, <clears throat> in grade seven? Yeah. Uh, me and a buddy of mine that went to my church, we snuck out for whatever reason. So we're out running around at 2 a.m. Oh. Uh, and cop cars come by, and we hide in a ditch. <laughs> <laughs> this was the other friend. He goes, dude, hide in the ditch. Get low. Yeah. And I'm a little seventh grader. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> and the cop cars drive by, and we're idiots. We're laying in ditches so the cop car don't see us. Yeah? Didn't it work? Yeah, it worked. Yeah. They drove right by. I'm not, I don't think you're idiots. I think that's smart. Yeah. You didn't get caught. That's perfect. <laughs> Stupid. Uh, let's see what else. Phoenix, a woman was taken into custody Wednesday morning after she stole an ambulance in Phoenix. Police say the homeless woman who's in her 40s stole the ambulance from a fire station near 15th Avenue in Roosevelt. Oh. It's unclear at this time if officers started a pursuit, a pursuit but they were able to stop the ambulance after using stop sticks. Police say the woman crashed the stolen ambulance into a fence as a result of the stop sticks, and the ambulance appeared to suffer minor front end damage and was towed away from the scene. She didn't take it through a drive through or something? <laughs> Should have. Nothing fun? Uh, the woman know. taken into custody, charges currently unknown, no other information or investigation ongoing. Well, she's homeless. Yeah. For a homeless woman, that's like stealing an RV. I mean, they got a bed in the back that has wheels on it. It's like and stealing a, bunch a house. Of, yeah. You said RV. Oh, yeah, okay. same thing. Yeah. It's a yeah, house on house. wheels. It is but house with on drugs. Wheels. Yeah, <laughs> yeah with drugs. Drugs, drugs and a bed. I yeah. mean, it has everything a homeless woman would want. Woo! Galveston police are responding to uproar over a photo posted to Facebook showing a man being led by officers on horses using a rope. Sherry Kelly, visiting the island from spring, said, You don't even do a dog like that. I don't care. That's inhumane. Where we were... Uh, see. Where were they taking him to? And why did they rope him if he was handcuffed? I don't think it's right, said Cynthia of Galveston. Yeah. Uh, Donald Neely, 43, arrested by Galveston police on Saturday and charged with criminal trespassing. That's all? Police okay. said Neely went into the Merrill Lynch building and refused to leave. Police said the officers led him around the corner of 21st and Market where the mounted patrol unit was staging when the photo was taken. Uh, he was also arrested at the same building three and a half weeks ago. According to court documents, Neely entered the Galveston Park Board office on the second floor without the consent of a park board member. Sounds like he just likes that building or needs to talk to somebody real bad. It's air conditioning. Right? He's yeah. getting in the air conditioning. That might be. Yeah. Uh, D. Alexander on Facebook said the optics of this are horrible. It looks like an 1840s slave patrol. Yeah. No it problem did. here. Please use what they have to make the arrest, said Jose. Oh. Don't do the crime if you don't want to be treated wrong. I love that argument. Oh, yeah. Hey, Hey man, if you don't want to get beat with a nightstick, don't be a jerk. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. yeah. If I'm a jerk, I deserve to get beat with a nightstick. There you go. Alrighty mm -hmm. then. Okay. Don't want none, won't be none. Yeah. There's wow. that. Battle yeah. adage. I, I love, love it. I love that. Don't have a smart mouth and you won't get punched the F out. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Oh. You, can't hand, you can't use words, so you use physical violence with those that do use words. Okay. Mm -hmm. Say it to my face, Christy. I think now you got it. Say it to my face. I do. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a very special edition of Listener Smackdown this morning hosted by none other than our longtime radio friend, Bingo. Bingo, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hey, good morning. Hi, how long has it been? Six months? 
Uh, no, it's been since May of last year. May, oh, wow. uh, it's 2019 now, and so May Over of 2018 was the last time we saw you? My birthday. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's silly. That's silly. I don't know. Um, what, May of 2018 was the last yes. time we saw, and, and why? Why has it been so long? You know, I don't know, Frank. Uh, you would think I was busy doing all kinds of crazy bingo stuff. Uh huh. Yeah. And I ain't did nothing. You ain't did nothing. Bingo. Let me <laughs> ask you this: uh, Have you been listening to another morning show? Tell the truth. No, I have. I know. I know you listen to no. Kim mornings. I know you call up Max and Pork Chop. No. Here's the thing: I no. got a, um, a tablet from uh, like Walmart for like fifty bucks. Oh, nice. And, okay. Uh, we get. I have the wireless phones, you know, because I have to have a wireless phone next to my mom's bed, you know, because she's elderly, disabled. She has to be able to grab a phone and call for help or oh, whatever. Oh, yeah, if she's falling or whatever. But through Cox Cable, uh-huh. I get Wi-Fi. I, I went ahead and got Wi-Fi, Good so I got you. a little tablet. Wow. So now I'm stuck on these video games. Oh, well, oh which game? Give me the first. The Final Fantasy. Yeah, there you and, go. Uh, the Viking. Yeah. War of Clans. Sure, of and, course. Yeah, you got gaming on a tablet to keep you busy now. Yeah. Yeah, you're starting to sound like my 11 and 12 year old boys. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's my mentality nowadays. All right, let me there go to the go. phone lines and get a couple contestants going here. I've got, looks like this is Sean. Sean, good morning. Good morning. Oh, it's good to hear your voice. He sounds like a good, solid American guy there. Sean. Mm-hmm. Good. America. You're a good morning. All right. And then, oh, we got Sean on line three, and then the line four is Fred. Fred, good morning. Fred should be there. I say, Fred, good morning. All right. Third Fred. Time, <laughs> for, is, is third time the charm? Yeah, ask him one more time. Hey, Fred. Hello. There he is. Hey, yeah. f- hey Fred. Yeah. Uh, really? Yeah. Hey, hey, Fred, hey, yeah, Fred, do you have us on speakerphone? <laughs> Are you listening to the radio? Maybe turn your radio down. God damn it. What? I went automatically. <laughs> ah, <laughs> seriously. He was clear when I was talking to him. Hey, where's Fred? Fred, are you there? Are you with us? All right, I can't take it anymore. Yeah. Uh, all right, I'll let Brad get another line. Okay, so uh, Bingo is going to host this edition <laughs> of Listener Smackdown. All right, so, line two is Anthony. Sorry. All right, let's go with Anthony. Anthony, good morning. Hey, good morning. All right, I'm, I'm happy to have two contestants that are breathing and responsive. Uh, got Sean, you, can you put the other name in the chat so I don't forget? I've already forgotten. Yeah, Sean and Anthony. Sean and Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> Sean's on line three, oh, Anthony's on line two. All right, this is Liz, Listener Smackdown. You can win these tickets before you can buy them. So I guess the uh, pre-sale started or starts today in like two hours at 10. Oh, really? Ooh. The general public tickets go on sale Friday at 10 a.m. Uh. So all this week it's win it before you can buy them. Well, I guess until tomorrow. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Until the show's over. All right, Bingo, are you ready to start? Are you ready to be Quizmaster? Absolutely. Okay. All uh, right, I'm Sean. Gonna, I'm going to give Sean the easy one. No, no, no. no. You're gonna, they're going to use their name as a buzzer. So Ooh. you're going to be asking both of them the questions. Is that right, Brad? Yeah. Uh, basically, he's going to talk like he's the wrestler. He's going to tell facts about himself. You have to guess which wrestler he's pretending to be. Oh, you're pretending oh, yeah. to be a wrestler. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> this makes it even more fun. Okay. <laughs> All right, so Anthony and Sean, you're going to use your name as a buzzer when you think you know which wrestler Bingo's impersonating. Gotcha. All right. All right. All right, Bingo. It's up to you. Here we go. I'm a 16-time world champion jet flying Sean. limousine ride. Sean! Son of a gun. Woo! Rick <laughs> Yeah, that was too I didn't easy. even get to do Woo! it. Oh, that's too easy. Woo! It's too easy. <laughs> really? All right, who got Sh- it? Sean got that one, right? Correct. As soon as I said 16-time world champion, they, they knew it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I should have saved that for later. Oh, you should have let... Brad, you should have come to me so I could have given you one of my wrestling rants. Oh, yeah, I know. I know who you talk about, That's though. Road. Yeah, yeah, everyone yeah. does. Yeah. <laughs> I've defeated Ric Flair 13 times in my prestigious career. <laughs> All right, okay. who do we have? Sean and Anthony. Yep. Right. So, uh, Sean's got one. Anthony's got zero. Okay, this uh, one's easy, all too. All right, use your name as a buzzer if you think you know who Bingo's impersonating. Go ahead, okay. Bingo. I'm <laughs> I'm a New York Times best-selling author. Sean. The, the, 
<laughs> keep going. Uh, Sean will guess, but keep going. Go. Uh-huh. Mick Foley. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Uh-huh. Keep going. Go ahead, Bingo. <laughs> the king of the hardcore and usually wrestling in sweatpants. <laughs> I'm most known for falling through the a 20-foot cell and having my tooth pushed through my nose. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Sorry. Sean's got two. And Ooh. Anthony. Hey, Anthony, are you a fan of wrestling? Yes. You are? Good. All right. <laughs> Did you know these at all? Yeah. Well, you better jump on it. You're right. about to lose this game. Right. It, it sounds like Sean. It sounds like Sean is playing the game with testosterone. Yeah, he's on <laughs> it. Yes, all kinds. I'm all pumped up, brother. Uh oh. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, all right, Sean. Whoa. Sean with two points. Anthony still has yet to get on the scoreboard here. All right, Bingo. Who's the next wrestler? Let's hear okay. it. I was addicted to crack for 20 years. Was still wrestling. Women love my python, which I carried Anthony. to the ring. Oh, Anthony thinks he knows the answer. Go ahead, Anthony. Jake the Snake. Woo! Yeah. Wow. That is correct. Women love yeah. my python, which I carried to the ring with me. Yeah. Jake the Snake Roberts. So <laughs> that gets Anthony into the scoring column. Yeah. All right. So Sean's got two. Anthony's got one. Bingo. Let's hear the next wrestler. Okay. I started off as a gangster rapper of WWE before. T- oh, go ahead and read the rest of it. Okay, before turning into Superman and never losing a match for 10 years, I act now and voice a cartoon bull and yellow beetle. You can't see me, John. Okay. Uh, yeah, don't, don't read the answer, man. <laughs> don't read the answer. <laughs> Anthony. All right, yeah, and I'm the host, Brad. Sorry. <laughs> I can't believe he made it that long without like, almost screwing up. I can't believe I have to keep reminding Brad who hosts the show. Uh, I'm just reminding you who buzzed in. No, you're re- you're taking over hosting duty. No, I'm reminding you who buzzed in. I don't need you to remind me. Okay. <laughs> go, go ahead, Sean. Oh, no, it was Anthony. It was Anthony. That was Anthony. I know. Go ahead, Anthony. John Cena. Yeah, he said the answer. It's all tied up now. Yeah. Oh, oh this is oh, crap. All right. Sean's got two points. Anthony's got two points. On the line. Ooh. On the line in this bingo hosted edition of Lister Smackdown. Oh, man. Win it before you can buy tickets for WWE Live. Tucson Arena, Sunday, September 29th. All right, bingo. Let's get the last wrestler here. I'm a beer drinking son of a bitch. Sean. With a- <laughs> <laughs> Read the rest, bingo. Go ahead. With a bite of a rattlesnake, you can find me on the Broken Skull Ranch. But if you don't. <laughs> but if you do. <laughs> but if you do, I might whip your ass. The bottom line. That's, that's the bottom that's line. That's the bottom line because Bingo says so. All right. Yeah. I think I heard I think I heard Sean in there. Sean? Oh, that would be Stone Cold Steve Austin. Was it Sean? Oh, it was, it Sean. was Sean. Yeah. It was Sean. Because I heard Anthony sounding sad and everything. Yeah, it was close. Sorry, Anthony. M- maybe, Sean, you, ma- maybe Sean and Anthony can go together. Uh, yeah. Uh, Lister Smackdown. Go ahead. I'm thinking about taking my girlfriend. She hates wrestling. Oh, yeah. that's a great idea. Make her buy the beer. Uh, yeah, it's a great yeah. idea to always bring your girl around guys that are way more attractive than you and in your underwear. underwear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I went to see Wicked with my wife. Uh, <laughs> not in person, dude. Yeah. Wicked. Wicked. No, yeah, it's like a Broadway musical thing. Oh. Yeah, my wife wanted to go, and I went with her. And I, I, I sat there while she watched, and I, you know, stayed awake. Wow, yeah. good job. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. like the most like public place Frank would go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. they, they dim the lights and he's sitting in a chair. Yeah. You know. <laughs> you must really love her. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. I put myself. Well, then, and, and then yeah, she must really love me, too, because the next time she wanted to go to one of these musical things, she told me it was okay if I didn't go. Uh, <laughs> the best. She told me, I want to go see Book of Mormon. And I go, you know what? I kind of would like to see it, too. She's like, tickets are $300. I'm like, you go by yourself. Yeah. 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 <laughs> hey, Bingo, thank you for coming in and hosting Lister Smackdown. That was I, a lot of fun. I enjoyed it, Frank. Yeah. And, and, and Sean and Anthony, thank you both for being good listeners and good contestants. Thank for- Here's Frank. Okay, we're on the air, and I need Brad here because this segment, I think, is about him. You do? Yeah. Uh, okay, what is it? Well, I can't do it if he's not here. Right. Uh, it says men who send unsolicited D pics may be narcissists 
and usually expect to receive something in return. Oh, I can't believe uh, he you, does you, that. You, you file this headline under duh. Yeah, but I can't believe that he sends unsolicited ones. Men who send other people unsolicited images of their genitals are likely to be more narcissistic and sexist than those who do not. Psychologists have found. It's so weird it took psychologists... How long have we had phones with cameras? Yeah, seriously. I mean, uh, uh, let's just call it a decade. Yeah, please. It's taken psychologists a decade to figure this one out? Uh-huh. I had a colleague that... Well, I, okay, listen. Let me tell you this. Uh, there was a person that was a friend of my wife's yeah. that told me about a colleague that I worked with that said he's sending D-pics. What? So then I asked the person. We, uh, somebody told me you're sending D-pics. What? No. Uh-huh. Oh, well, that's what most people would say. Right. Yeah. Um, but I, but uh, this falls in line with all, all that stuff. Narcissistic? What? You're so, wait a second. You're sending images of your wiener randomly to strangers? What kind of head case are you? Yeah, that's weird. It, it is. It's absolutely weird. I don't believe that Brad sends unsolicited ones. I don't think Wait a second. You're putting me in on this story? No, I don't I, do that. Listen, I started off, you weren't here. Yeah, I know. And I said, where's Brad? I need to have Brad here for this segment because I feel like this is all about him. <laughs> and it's not all about Okay, me. so now we know you don't send unsolicited D-pics. Right. I, right. I send unsolicited sex gifts now. That's the difference. It's GIFs, but whatever. No, yeah, they're not, are they unsolicited or are you, are you already having kind of a sex He just said it's unsolicited. Stop trying to, admit, mm. to get him to lie. Well, because- Most of the time it's solicited. Sometimes it's solicited. Surprise. What's oh, going on? Really? Yeah. Just to your friend? Like you're just chatting no, about and then all friends. of a sudden it just turns dirty? No, you dude, just... like the girl I'm talking to is like dating and then. No, so, so it's he's... it's people known to him, not randoms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. wouldn't do that randomly because you never know if it's going to be like some kid's phone well, or whatever. I'm sorry. I don't mean random as in completely random. Yeah, I, just I, I meant some numbers. I meant more like you met a chick at the club and, and then the next thing you know. First thing is yeah. like, pow! Yeah, here's, here's my dong. Here's my dong like I know you wanted. Stop no, I'd be like, here's some guy with a bigger dong. Does that get you going? Uh, uh, oh, so you send out fake D-pics then, all right. Oh, I see. yeah, yeah. Uh, men who send other people unsolicited images of their generals. Researchers surveyed over a 1,000 men to compare the personalities and motivations of those who sent intimate images and those who did not. Rather than for personal gratification, men who share images of their genitals typically do so, hoping... To arouse the recipient and get images back in return. So they think, they really do believe that that's what turns women on. So, really yeah. But I that. said this from the beginning. Why are you sending a D-pick? And, you're, and it's the same thing as like guys that cat call. Oh, is the lady going to stop? Yeah. Hey, hey, sexy mama. Oh, are you oh, talking to me? Oh, oh we, can I? Oh, we, what can you, uh, you want me to go out with you? I should be on top right now. Yeah. Oh, just let me open your pants. So this is Let's what just do it. This is what dumb guys think. They they, really they, they, think, they, they think sending a picture of a, of their wiener, and then all of a sudden the lady's gonna be just absolutely incapable of not responding and asking, begging for sex. I have always wondered if they really thought this was going to work, a and sm- they actually do. A small oh. minority of participants reported sending the private photos in order to intentionally elicit a negative response from women. Well, if that's your intent, then that's funny. Oh, yeah. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, if you're just trying to troll them. If then, you're just uh, trolling, my yeah. goodness. Yeah, good, good job. <laughs> well done. It uh-huh. would be kind of funny, though, if you had several wiener pics on your phone of micro phalluses. And when you met a woman and the talk turned sexual, you're just like, well, and you go, well, this is what I got. Yeah. yeah if you want to end the conversation real quick. <laughs> for sure. I, but, but that's the way you weed through the size queen. Yes, I know. And you'll find one that'll be like, oh, you know what? That doesn't matter to me. It's fine. And she's full of lies. Right. But then when you do meet and she finds out it's slightly larger than micro <laughs> phallus. She'll be pleasantly surprised. Right. Yeah, I think uh, all single guys have a stock C pick in their phone. I, I yeah. oh, I'm not. Oh, you said sing, you said single guys. Yeah, okay. yeah just yeah. the one that looks good, good angle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes it look bigger. And the problem is, I've I've been in situations where I've made it look too big to where I've, yes. I've gotten their hopes oh, up. Sure. Yeah. I, I mean, that happens to me all. It's just a little Photoshop on the shaft. Right. Oh, that's what I do. I, I widen the shaft, I elongate Oof. it, and then I, I make my torso smaller. Yeah. 
And then next thing you know, I look like I'm 13 inches but then and he I buried came in, myself. But then he came in one day complaining because there's some new app that allows women to put a photo into it and then it can measure the size of a ween. Yeah, iPhones oh. have it. The yeah. measure app. The measure Whoa. app. And so ladies can, with a photo of a guy's wiener, can tell exactly the size of it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The width, the length, the whole thing. Yeah. Man, I have only gotten one D-pic my whole life. What? Only, only one. What, yeah. are you, you, what are you doing wrong? I, I don't think I'm doing anything wrong. Uh, I think I'm doing something right. I think you're doing something wrong. Yeah. Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. Check your text messages. All now. right. I you're hope, welcome. I wish. We determined that men who reported having sent unsolicited D pics demonstrated higher levels of narcissism and endorsed greater ambivalent and hostile sexism than their non sending counterparts. You're going to love this, D. So, in That's other words, weird. guys that send unsolicited D pics are scum of the earth. Yeah. I, I yeah pieces of human garbage. I mean, the one that I got the one time was like, "Can I send you?" You know, and I was like, "Yeah." Do oh, it. so they asked permission first. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that was nice. That's what Louis C.K. did before he J.O.'d in front of a bunch of lady comics, <laughs> yeah. right? But he got him in a corner, and he's like, "Hey, hey, hey can I do this?" <laughs> I guess. All I mean, right. I'll, give, I'll give you an opening spot never. on my next tour. No, he never, <laughs> he never offered that. He no. never offered I it. She did. Aw, yeah. that's a shame. Yeah, you kidding me? She'd be on tour with Louis C.K. right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I wouldn't have complained about it. Researchers also found that men have a number of rationales for sending such photographs. We determined that the most frequently reported motivational category for sending genital images was a transactional mindset, i.e. motivated by hopes of receiving images in return. Weird. <laughs> it's crazy. Why would it's they just think we did Do you know what my friends do? We upload it to our Facebook group. Oh, no. We have, yes, and then we make fun of them. (laughs) Yeah. Was there ever a wiener that gets uploaded where all the ladies are like, oh, oh, wait a second. Yeah, Yeah, who's that guy? Sometimes, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, and a lot of times um, our gay guys that are in the group, Uh they upload their pictures, too, and more often than not, those are good ones. Oh, God. Yeah, we get the crap ones. The late fat ladies get the crap ones? (laughs) No, just women. Gay guys get the best wiener. Yeah, Uh yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> but us women, we're the ones always posting the bad ones. Yeah, see, I don't understand why, like, religious people are so against gay guys. It levels the playing field for us average guys. You I know, guess. like, get all the good wieners out of the Christ- dating pool. Brad, it really does. You don't understand Christianity, obviously. Yeah, obviously yeah. you don't know what it's about. They don't, they don't hate the sinner. They just hate the sin, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I see a gay guy with, like, a huge, awesome penis. I'm like, I'm glad you're going for dudes. Yeah. Yeah. You see how, how Brad took it? Mm-hmm. He's like, hey, look at that. One less guy I got to compete with. That's exactly. Right. Uh-huh. He doesn't mind. I've been single too long, bro. I think a lot of a lot of evangelical men have it said in their head that when they partner up, it'll be with a virgin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's true. Even why, nowadays? I don't know why you're scoffing. A hundred percent, Brad. A hundred percent. Yeah, there are dads that are having those promise keeper type arrangements with their daughter yeah. saying you yeah. won't do it. Yeah. Gross. Ew, another man controlling a woman's sexuality. <laughs> it's so you gross. You guys don't even know. You Ugh. guys can't even like imagine how crazy it is. Yeah, you well, can't. You just can't. I mean, even I was imagine. in church, but I wasn't dealing with what you have to deal with. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, it's nuts. Hey, you, pay attention. Back to the Frank Show now on 96.1 KLPX. All right. I don't know if you get the alerts on your phone like I do, but a news alert popped up yesterday and it said Disney will be offering Hulu, Disney Plus and ESPN Plus bundle for twelve ninety nine a month. Uh, the all in one offering is going to be available when Disney Plus launches November 12th. What? I've got to wait till November 12th. Yeah, looks like it. So I subscribe to Hulu. Uh, I pay extra so I don't have to deal with ads. Yeah, because ads anger me. Right. Uh, we already subscribed to ESPN Plus. ESPN Plus, by the way, it, that I find that you know NBC Sports has done the same thing. Uh, NBC Sports Gold, mm-hmm. another subscription service that's sixty dollars a year. Mm. So I had this on my phone, e, uh, uh, NBC Sports Gold, because there's all kinds of soccer matches that I can't find on regular TV. Right, they'll stream them on the app, and I can cast it to my TV. Yeah. And it's nice. Yeah. Um but yeah, ESPN Plus. So it, also every soccer league 
like Tucson FC Tucson. You really? can you can watch their games on ESPN Plus. No kidding. You know yeah. what else is on ESPN Plus? The UFC because they bought that. They sure did. Yeah, all that's featured. All of that's featured. Yeah. So there's a ton of stuff on, and, and then like um, all of the college networks, like Pac, or not Pac-12 network, but. All kinds of college games of like schools that you know, the regional schools and stuff. Like oh, if really? I wanted to watch Western Kentucky men's football, I could probably find it somewhere on ESPN Plus. Oh wow! It's it's pretty thorough. Insane the amount of content there. This is why this is the end of Netflix because with uh, Disney, this is a direct blow to Netflix. They're doing it on purpose. They're matching the price. Say so you could have just Netflix for twelve ninety nine, or you could have Disney Plus, meaning every single movie that you love. And ESPN and all the TV on Hulu. So that's what I said at the very beginning. Disney's going to offer Hulu, Disney Plus, and ESPN bundle for twelve ninety nine. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. We and just in it. case they missed that point, because so you're I just okay. restating it more emphatically. Yeah, because yeah. it needs to be more emphatic. <laughs> it's huge. Yeah, I think, all the Disney movies. I think, you love. I think Brad's on a spectrum. Yeah, yeah I think he's. <laughs> No, the person on call one is on the spectrum. Think, they kind of distract me. Uh, I, I think Brad's a little bit on the spectrum, maybe. It might be. <laughs> who, who is this? Did you even put in the thing who it is? No, I couldn't understand the name. Ah, oh, line one, you're on the air. Good morning. His name is Phil. He has a little bit of difficulty speaking, but he wants to talk to Christine, please. Oh, okay. Oh, who is it? I don't know, but we're doing a show right now, so let's just right. let's stay focused. Mm -hmm. Again, Brad's on a spectrum. Fan Christine. I, or not. <laughs> uh, she didn't sound like he was trying to call and say that he likes it. It was just somebody that was calling and having someone else speak on their behalf? I well, believe that was his caretaker. Yes. Yeah. He has a little trouble speaking. No. Hello? Hey. Yeah, hi. Who are we speaking with? Hey. What's your name? Bill. 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 Or did he say Phil? Or Dale. Oh, Dale. Or Phil. did he? Phil. Okay, Phil. P-H-I-L. Okay. Oh, thank oh, yeah. you. What did he say? Phil. P-H-I-L. Yes. Okay, Phil. Phil. Hi, Phil. You're hey. on You're on with us. Good morning. Casey. Christine. Yes. You, you were awesome. Oh. On Saturday night at the Circle S. Oh, oh, he was out at the Circle S Saloon. I know you. He was on the um on the side. Yes, I saw him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Phil, did you I laugh? Know. Did Christine make you laugh? Yeah. Oh, that's oh, nice. Thanks, Phil. That was really hey. sweet. I thought my my, my 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 wife was the one you you bagged on. <laughs> 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 you bagged on his wife? A little, yeah, I did. It was funny, though. What was okay. going on? You got to tell us what happened. Oh, I was just explaining to her uh, why she doesn't want kids and, uh, you know, about what her vagina is going to, yep. what's going to happen to it <laughs> uh, <laughs> when she has children. <laughs> it, was, hey, it was about Bruce. Oh, the Bruce Springsteen. Oh, she's the one that liked yeah. Bruce Springsteen. Yep. Yeah. So Christine does a Bruce yeah. Springsteen bit at Circle S Saloon, and apparently only one person in the audience liked they're it. They're the only people, they're the only table that laughed. Everyone else iced me out when I did my Bruce Springsteen bit, and they were the only people that liked it. That's true. They were the best audience people, best members of the audience. I loved you guys. Yeah, that whole table was That's awesome. That's funny. Um, Phil, can you tell us what your condition is? I, I had... Uh, Heart attack, Ow. and I can't talk very well, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I I lost a, a lot of my function. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, listen, I see you're getting out more than I am. I'll tell yeah. you that much. Good for you. That whole table was amazing. Yeah, They're great people. You know, yeah. you know me. When it's time to party, I'm laying in bed at eight thirty. <laughs> That's true. He is out. <laughs> All right, Phil. It was nice hearing from you. Thanks for the call. Oh, man, that makes me feel so good. Crazy, you rock. Ah, uh, thanks, Phil. That uh, means a lot to me. Yeah, that's nice. Because I was agonizing over that. I felt so embarrassed. Nobody liked my bit. <laughs> and it really is true. I bombed so hard, you guys. She came in the next Monday morning uh, and told me off air about how 
awful her Bruce Springsteen bits were received. Yeah, oh. she even wrote about it on Facebook oh. how bad it was and how every one of her openers was way better. Oh, yeah. No, they they had solid sets all the way through. I booked so good. These comics were great. And then it got to me, and I was doing good, good, good. Bruce Springsteen tanked. <laughs> Listen, and that's a 10-minute bit. And right. once I start it, I can't get out of it. I have no exit plan. Yeah. Because it usually kills. Right. Except for when I'm on the air. Not really. Yeah. I mean, I've tried it a couple times here, and it doesn't do well. Anyway, so I I don't have an... I can't get out of it. So once I was in, and I was like, oh, man, I'm just doing it. So I, your game plan is once you start bombing, start making fun of, like, the disabled man's wife? Is that what happened? <laughs> no, because she loves Bruce Springsteen. And okay. she was, like, saying, no, you know, like, don't talk about him. I was like, I'm coming for you. I'm going to ruin your life right now. <laughs> So <laughs> you're gonna ruin her life? Yeah, because she loves him so much. So yeah. I was just like, oh, let me tell you the truth about him. <laughs> so they were the only only table that cared or laughed or had any fun with it. And then um, <laughs> I don't know. And then I started talking about other stuff. I mean, once the bit was over, I was I acknowledged that it didn't do well. I was like, well, all right, they can't all be winners, you guys. Uh, you know what I do on the radio when stuff starts tanking? What? Straight to commercial break. Yeah, bye. You hang up. That's or, what you do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I boot my audience is what I do. Oh, God. <laughs> it was really, I'm glad that my perception that they did enjoy it and that they were having fun, I'm glad that I was right about that because I thought maybe that table liked me. I don't know. All right, so uh, uh, Disney is going to be offering Hulu. Yeah, with movies and uh, all the movies you love. Disney Channel. <laughs> Every single one. Ad-supported Hulu. Yeah. And ESPN Plus. Mm-hmm. All in one package for twelve ninety nine. So how much for no ad Hulu? Okay, now I subscribe to no ad Hulu. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know. I'm not sure what it is. I think no ad Hulu itself is like twelve ninety nine a month. Yeah, That's what I mean. you're right. Yeah. I, I'm sure it will be an upcharge, but will it be worth it? I think it will. I if, mean, it, it literally covers all your kids. Yeah, packages. if I get Disney, ESPN Plus, and non ad supported Hulu, if it goes from twelve ninety nine to four sixteen ninety nine, seventeen bucks, yeah. I'd, I'd pay an extra four dollars a month to not have to watch commercials on Hulu on a streaming service I never watch. Yeah. Yes, yes. And people have to realize that they say Disney, right? Disney owns Fox. So you're going to get everything that Fox made. Uh, that's and not Fox News. No, no, that's no. That's Fox Entertainment. Fox right. Entertainment. All the Simpsons. I, I see some people on Twitter saying, well, ever since Fox News got bought. No, that's not. Oh, right. so that's why. Okay, so now I get it. That's why the Orville is going from Fox TV to Hulu. There you go. Yep. Oh, I figured it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what is going on? Yeah. Yes, everything 20th Century Fox is there. Pixar, all the Pixar movies, and then everything Disney and ABC. Uh, they So they, they have everything. They so have 90% how, of entertainment. Okay, all right. So how much content is going to be left for Netflix to stream then? That's the problem. Only uh, their original content, which they've been spending a buttload of money on. But how many times can you watch Stranger Things? But what about, like, Ugh. the Taco Chronicles, man? That's a really great show. It's I going to be a it yet. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, I started so to watch good. it, and it was in Espanol, and unfortunately, I'm not bilingual. But you can put the... Subtitles the on? Subtitles. I know. So good. I'm a white guy that doesn't get upset when I hear people speaking Spanish. Why, why aren't you enraged? It, I feel it's like crazy. I'm doing something wrong. I should be filled with rage. Yeah, I don't know what happened to you. Who are you? <sighs> What's going to happen when I'm standing in line in public, and I hear a white guy say to a person of color, go back to where you came from? I, What's going to happen? It's the reason I can't carry a weapon. What's going to happen? That's why. Because I, I, my head's going to explode. Yeah, mine too. You yeah. better not say anything like that to a person of color in my presence because oh, you're going to be in big trouble. Yeah. I'll get arrested. I promise you. Yeah. I promise I'll get arrested. You're going to see my mug shot I would, splashed across the internet. I would go to jail for something like that. I'll, but I won't use my fist. I'll just use my hand. My kids too. I I mean yeah, my, what? Okay, Bruce Lee. Same thing. <laughs> my hands. He's gonna massage him. <laughs> I meant to say I'm not gonna use my hands. I'm just gonna use my words. Right. Right. But the way I use words is really scary. So. Oh. <laughs> what does the hand say to the face? Slap. Whether he's ready or not. Frank. Now back to the Frank Show on ninety six point one KLPS. Aww. I thought there was some audio to go with this story. There's not. It's just the story. What? A British man won a settlement from a hospital that was supposed to do a routine bladder surgery, but they accidentally gave him a circumcision. You know, he's better off, this guy. I'll tell you that much. 
Uh, well, there's no adult man that wants to walk around uh, uncircumcised. Yes, that's British gross. men love it. That's gross. British men are happy. No, I don't They're think they fine. are. Yes, they are. Yeah, I, I just when you say British men, yes, they don't do it over there. Do you mean the white? Fine. Do you mean the white men? What do you mean? The white British men. Yeah. Do white British men get circumcised? No. You say that you know this. No, they don't. What are you talking about? How do you know? What do you What do you mean? How do I know? She Look saw She saw one British white guy's wiener that wasn't circumcised and assumes all white British men don't circumcise their wieners. No, right. you know that. You know from going over there they don't do it. Europeans don't I do don't it. know that at all because I don't inquire about men's penises. Look it up. Nor do I see them. Actually, I did hear that European women love American men because they're circumcised. Because they're circumcised. And they're sick and tired of these gross-looking wieners no. that still have the foreskin. No, you guys are just wiener-shaming other men. It's disgusting. That's not nice. Yeah, that's and not it's not natural. That's not nice. And nobody wants any cheese collector at the tip of their dog. That's you. That we have we have a soap and water now. Nobody there's has a, to have there's that. There's a reason we have circumcision. No, there isn't. Yeah, there yeah, is. It's because to make it, it was look to, bigger. No, and it was and to also stop. to keep it from getting all filthy and dirty. It was to stop boys from masturbating during the Victorian era. No, that's, and that's why we came up was. with cereal. That's no. how Kellogg's became a company. No. Ugh. So that extra skin acts as a what? sock? Okay. Christine's acting like I don't know what I'm talking about. Right. Uh, cereal wasn't started to keep people from masturbating. I know what the Kellogg. I know. I know the backstory. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's not. Well, cereal. then why are you I mean, sighing it's, it's, like I'm an it's idiot? Convoluted, and it's not really what. I mean, there's more to it than that. And oh, you know that. oh, I know. I don't know that. You don't. You don't know the story of the Kellogg. I brought it up because I heard uh, Seinfeld say it on Comedians in Cars that cereal got started to keep men from masturbating. Specifically, I think maybe I remember hearing soldiers. Really? I don't think so. Oh, well then, right. what is it then? Well, this guy, Dr. Kellogg, had a, a fitness, uh, like a camp or whatever. Yeah. And he tried to, various ways to get people to be more fit. And one of the ways was, hey, don't masturbate. Right. And then, um, but in the meantime, he also developed this um, flake stuff that you put in milk and he invented cereal. And that's Dr. Kellogg. Okay. That's it. So he didn't make cereal for the specific reason no. of stopping people from masturbating. No, it was just part of his r routine was like, and part of his uh, fitness regime <clears throat> was don't do oh. that. Uh, it says here, he invented cornflakes in 1878 in the hope that plain food would stop people masturbating. Oh. Mr. Kellogg, the man who created cornflakes, produced the cereal in the late 19th century and marketed it. As a healthy, ready-to-eat, anti-masturbatory morning meal. Really? That was not in the little show I watched about it, but all right. Cornflakes, this is from news.com.au, mm -hmm. which is Australian, so I don't know if we can trust it. <laughs> Probably not. But it says, I, I think they... But it says cornflakes was created to stop masturbation. Wow. That was not how it was... I watched a show about it, and it was like the whole... All of it was like... Can I, tell you, can I tell thing. you what you've done? What? You've done the same thing that deplorables do. What? You read fake news and just run with it. <laughs> <laughs> you just ran. <laughs> I did. <laughs> yep, you got me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I did. You saw a show that presented one story and you're like, that's the story. That's, that's right. the way it happened. Man. <laughs> Henry Rollins doesn't know anything about anything. Oh, you were getting it from Henry Rollins? Yeah, I thought he was fact checked. That guy never masturbates. You see how angry he is? He's the angriest. He's, he's so up. he's so angry he won't perform with his band anymore. Right. <laughs> oh God. Um Okay, so the seven year old got All right, so listen, I've turned you on the cereal was invented to stop masturbating. Sure, yeah. Now let's get back to the uncircumcised wieners. Because sure. that's disgusting. Mm, no. <laughs> Don't Shame men. Why would you do that? And men have been penis shaming other men since no, the dawn of men. And they shouldn't do it. It's wrong. Nah, it's you in our DNA. Are, hey, Christine. You guys are hey, shaming hey, men hey, and that's Hey, Christine, bad. listen. Mm -mm. This is a morning radio show on a classic rock station. Yes. With Brad and I being dude bros. Yes. yes. And you being a voice of a lady here. Yes. So the, for you to be the supportive, kind, don't penis shame, mm -hmm. that's not funny. Don't, don't and penis shaming, shame. And shaming penises will never not be funny. It it's is not old, funny. I'm telling you right now, people feel bad. as a guy with a penis, mm -hmm. that uh -huh. I've shamed my own penis more than I've shamed anybody else's penis. Uh -huh. 
So for me to shame someone else's penis mm-hmm. feels good. Yeah. <laughs> And I hear shaming other penis <laughs> makes your penis bigger. That's right. If yeah. hating my penis uh-huh. is wrong, I don't want to be right. Uh-huh. Uh, sh- shaming uncircumcised penises in some odd way boosts my testosterone levels. <laughs> you can feel it pulsating. <laughs> <through your mouth. laughs> I mean, got some energy now to play golf. I, I was going to say it's time for me to make a tea time now. <laughs> I feel alive. Shame. What are you playing? What is this? Shame. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> shame. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Uh, oh, to see. Dakota Johnson's still talking about the gap between her teeth. Yeah. I'm glad she's talking about it. Well, what do you mean? Well, I Christine? mean, there was a lot of anger and outrage about her closing the gap in her teeth. And so it's fi- finally we get to hear from her. Okay. Yeah, I think what she was going to say is that she got it closed because Chris Martin, her on again, off again boyfriend's uncircumcised. And she was tired of getting the foreskin. Oh. Right. In her teeth. Yeah. She's like, look, I've got dental floss. I don't need this gross foreskin. Yeah. <laughs> Another reason to get circumcised. Oh, my God.